Of course, this one uh, was actually taken in, in 1964, right after Robert Kennedy was elected to the United States Senate. Dozens of photographs and mementos of Polly Baca's illustrious career in politics line the entrance of her home in Denver. A legend in state and national democratic politics, Baca worked for three presidents of the United States and holds the distinction of being the first Latina in the country to serve in both chambers of a state's legislature. Her lifelong commitment to equality led her to participate in some of the most iconic moments of U.S. history. I was part of the labor movement, the civil rights movement, the, the uh, feminist movement, uh, and, and whatever, wh whomever it is that's being discriminated against, I need to be there to help them. Shortly after graduating from Colorado State University in 1962, Baca began her career as an editorial assistant for a national labor union newspaper in Washington, D.C. The daughter of hardworking Mexican parents who lived in Greeley, she took advantage of every opportunity to better herself and her community. I took that risk and it changed my life. It meant that I could participate the next year in the 1963 March on Washington with Martin Luther King, and then work with Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta and become the co-chair of the Huelga Committee in Washington, D.C. And then it led to all kinds of exciting uh, times. My thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. But the turmoil of the 1960s hit close to home while she was working as the national deputy director of the Viva Kennedy campaign. On the night of June 5th, 1968, while Robert F. Kennedy was celebrating his win in California with members of his campaign, including Baca, he was shot, leaving the ballroom of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. Baca had stepped away from the ballroom for a few minutes when she heard the news. But by the time I got downstairs, uh, it was all over the news and it was devastating. That tragic event fueled her commitment to fight for the rights of minorities, women, and the working class. In 1971, Baca worked for the Democratic National Committee and organized the first Hispanic caucus of a major party. Later, she was the first Latina to co-chair two national Democratic Party conventions. In 1981, she was elected vice chair of the Democratic National Committee with the help of friend and then Governor Bill Clinton. One of my supporters at that time was a young man who had just lost his race for governor in Arkansas. And Bill Clinton helped me get elected vice chair of the National Party. In this role, she spearheaded an amendment to the National Party bylaws that required equal division between men and women at all levels of the Democratic Party, and another amendment that guaranteed diversity at the party's highest levels. Baca served in the Colorado State Legislature for 12 years. During that time, she sponsored more than 200 House bills and over 60 Senate bills. In total, more than 150 bills that she sponsored were passed into law in areas ranging from banking regulations to education and consumer protection. As a trailblazer in local and national politics, she has inspired Latinas to run for office at all levels of government. She started something for us, and it is our obligation to continue opening the doors for future leaders, men, women, immigrants of all kinds. Baca has attended every Democratic National Convention since 1964, and served as either a staff member, delegate, or national co-chair at 10 of these conventions. Today, she continues to work with community leaders to promote civic engagement. In order to sustain our democracy, we need people involved and engaged, and I'm excited to see that happening again. Baca has received numerous prestigious awards for her leadership and her impact on the Latino community, both locally and nationally. She was inducted into both the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame and the National Hispanic Hall of Fame. Polly should be remembered as a wonderful Latina leader, as a pioneer.